Stay safe. What is it in this song in particular that you're like, I really want to learn something from this? What are they doing? One of the best performances you've seen as a band? Yeah, for sure. Oh, I mean, look, I'm pretty sure that bass guitarist tours with John Mayer. So that's John Mayer's bass guitarist, I believe. These, all of these people here are insane musicians. To get on a stage like this, you have to be insanely good. Like, that's it. So, and it's, and that's the coolest thing. Dave Ron Harrison, check out the Dave Ron Harris and John Mayer solos. Okay. Because it's 20 minutes. I'm not going to watch the whole thing. But let's have a listen. I, I, I've, I've said it at that. Oh, I can't do that because I want you guys to start calling me Paul from now. we're vibing I think that's pretty much the core progression of this whole song I'm just figuring it out. So the, the cool thing that this is, so what's happening, what I'm doing here, and I'm jumping in on it, is um, it's a 2-5. They're not giving us anything yet. So this is the cool thing about, like, what's happening right here. They're about to start a jam, and they're just starting to jam. They're just, they, they'll, they'll bring you in. There's not one point in this groove that resolves. So he's doing a 2-5 in the key of B. So it's a um, C sharp minor to an F sharp 7.
And that's how I'm looking at it. So that means I'm going to think Dorian. So if I'm jamming on my pentatonic in the, in the D minor, should we grab out the electric? Would it be easier on the electric? I think it would be. So we'll grab the PRS because John May is playing a PRS. We're literally going to steal John's guitar for this song. Mars, what up? Thank you for following. Okay, so what we're going to do is on this jam, so he's got that, uh, he's sitting on the, uh, the C sharp minor, and then he goes to the F sharp seven. And because that's a two five, when we're jamming on it, there's I'm back at the C sharp minor, right here, and then I got my G seven. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be thinking, uh, my minor pentatonic will be in the C, mi uh, C sharp minor. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna add this note here, which is called the natural six. It's like a Dorian. So in this key on the C sharp, it's gonna be on the 11th fret on the B string. And you can get the octave also over here on the, uh, on the uh, D string on the eighth fret. See how it's got that cool like? That's gonna that's gonna be your ninja note, and that's the the note that you're gonna hear David Ryan Harris hit because that note there that he's popping out, that's actually the third of the of the F sharp that he pulls out. And see how many times you can hear him do it, because he does it a few times. I want you guys to start calling me Paul. <laughs> Pretty sure he jumps down to it right there. <laughs> and you know what's sick about this? It, he just jumps in and he's like, Ruin. Mars, how, how often do I go live? I go live Monday through Friday. Um, Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. Uh, and on TikTok, I'm, I'm going to schedule the events. But if you want to watch anything I do, everything's on YouTube. So all my replays are all on YouTube. So if you want to go to our YouTube channel, it's linked in my, um, in my TikTok profile uh, and you can see all the replays of everything I do. So if, any, if you miss any of the days, jump in and hang out with us. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and we've got a free music school for anyone who wants to learn how to play music. Uh, I've made a free music school. The links are in my bio and description. And you can chat with us too. There's a whole community feature on top of all the tutorials that I have there. Nice. Ah, you hear it? Ba -da -da. Jazz, what up? Jazzu. Jesuv. Jesuv bliss. Jesuv bliss. Thank you for following on Twitch. What's up? Ba -da -da. Ba -da -da. So did you hear that? How cheeky that is? That's where... It like, he's already straight off. Right off the bat, he's like, yo, this is our vibe. We're hitting Dorian. This note. The fifth note he does. So you got it. That's the third of the first chord. And then he goes to the third. The next target note is the third of the next chord. Fuck yeah. So if you're trying to re recreate this, I wouldn't try to copy his lick right away. Like copying the lick is not the win. Um, what's, what's up with thirds? Bro, thirds mean you know what you're doing. That's all thirds do. If someone knows how to navigate thirds, they know what the fuck they're doing. So if you're in music and you're playing chords and someone's playing chords and you're targeting thirds, that means you know exactly what's happening in the music. And they sound fucking good because they're the color notes. They're the notes that are like, ooh. They're the thing that make it major or minor. They're really good color notes. They're like the, they're like, they're like the, yeah, exactly. Mars has got it. You, you beat me to what I was going to say. So the third 
is where you're gonna find your major and minor. So that is like the huge, the biggest color portion of your, of your chord is the third. Now, seven, nine, 11, 13, they're all tensions. So they're just adding a little bit more. They're adding a bit more stuff. So like in the, in like the major scale, right? So you've got, you know, you know, do, re, mi, fa, so, like one, two, three, four. So what, what key are we in here? We're in this key. How the heck do you know where the thirds are on the fretboard? Bro, I'm going to show you all of it. That is what my next theory course is. I'm just gonna show you exactly how to find all the thirds. Um, and because it, it changes all the time, you just gotta practice learning to see them. You're gonna learn how to see these things. And then once you learn how to see them, you're gonna get faster and faster. But anyway, back to the thirds. So the thirds are the coloring of how it works. <laughs> um, because you don't wanna sit down, like the one thing I wanna tell you do not do, the like will 100% will not serve you, is you sitting down and playing every single like triad. Like that will not serve you. Being like one, three, five, like that does not serve you. What will serve you is you jump into a song and then you analyze. So right now you can see we've only been in here like for like 15, oh, I, have, I haven't done it Luke yet. I haven't made that theory course yet. So Simon's all right, Simon's doing well. He's, he's killing it. But you, you jump in and you're gonna get these chords out first, right? Mm -hmm. So the third is gonna create the color. It creates major or minor. It's either happy or sad. It's like, it is the biggest, um, I, I would say it's like the number one thing that you can pull out right away, um, aside from the root note. But the root note can be eliminated if you add a seven. Uh, I don't know my hero by Foo Fighters, I'm sorry, Katie. But we're learning a song right now. We're doing some practice right now on learning. Uh, but anyway, I'm sorry, Katie. This is more like guitar solo practice right now. You can come back in, an, in like an hour and we'll be singing songs. So the third is the big color note. Then your tensions from the seven, so you're going seven, nine, 11, uh, 13. Those are all gonna be like these extra notes that pop out. They're gonna be very, very cool. So for instance, when I play the root note, um, so say if the root note is on the C minus seven, here I got that C sharp. When I hit that note, that's the 13 of this. But when I play over the F, F7, the F sharp seven, it's the third. Same note, different relationship. So this is the thing. The intervals only matter when you understand what's actually happening behind in the chords. So you need to know how to approach this stuff because you don't want to be going like You, you don't want to be like, oh, Luan said do this. You need to actually be like, okay, how can I be a little bit clever about this? So for instance, say I've got to see, like this is one thing that I could do. Say I want to target the third, or say for instance, I'm playing a minor seven and I want to target the seventh. So I could go like this, C sharp minor seven here. That's my flat seven, which is a tension on that C sharp minor seven. See root, flat seven. And then that's going to lead me to go down a semitone, which will be the third once I hit here. So I go. So can you see how I did that? So I used, I was like, I'm gonna try and make a lick that leads to the flat seven when I play the C sharp. And then one, that, C, that flat seven will then go semitone down, turn into the third of the next chord. So it might be a little bit complicated at the beginning, but it is, it's like when you're practicing improvisation, that is the practice. The practice is not, all right, I'm gonna lay down some chords and I'm gonna be like, that's not practice. That is you just playing. And you can experiment as much as you want and you, there's stuff to learn from that, 
like when you see me do my looping covers and stuff like that, and I'm like conscious, I'm like, how can I in real time work these ideas that I have? But when you go to practice and you're trying to extract from this this stuff, you need to look in and you need to be like a microscope. Be like, what's he actually doing here? Okay, so C sharp, he's got the, he's going for the third. And then when he hears the F sharp seven, he's going to, he's going down to there. And so that is, you can already see in just like 10 seconds of us listening to this, how much value we just got out of there. You don't need to sit down and learn every single lick note for note. You, you just need to be like, all right, cool. Anytime I hear a two chord, and then I hear a five chord, you can do that in that shape if you're going to be sitting there. And there's plenty of songs that when you might play a two chord over here. And then you could be like, You can do all that stuff. Anyway. So where are we down here? That's cool. Okay, so he landed on that note right there. So he's playing a, a major over minor. That's cool. Because right now we, he, the band's got a, a minor chord backing and he's going to a major third. And it's creating like a major minor. Ooh. Very, very sexy. That's fancy. I would not expect you to jump into that right away. I mean, I don't even do that stuff. But that's by he's David Ryan Harris and I'm Luan. So give me like three or four years. I think I could do it. playing guitar nearly 20 years and I went to Berkeley and I'm a professional musician that's pretty much what I do I mean that's all I do every day I just do music and then I gig on the weekends so you can see he's he's just coming back to that third right he's just moving through the pentatonic and then he hits the third and that's how he does that clever thing Okay, that's fancy, and I'm not even gonna analyze it because I'm not gonna use it. But that's very, very cool. He, that's quite modal playing, and I suck at that shit. The audio is doubling up. Yeah, TikTok sucks. I'm sorry, Calvin. We can't help you out here. Um, TikTok is super shitty. Uh, but if you if you want to hear it nice and clean, it's on YouTube. So that's the one we prioritize at the moment because YouTube is good. TikTok uh, Studio just is really garbage. I don't know how to... We One day TikTok Studio will fix it. What I said was... What I said was... <laughs> What I said was so good. And that's the thing with improvisation. You don't need to be fancy. Like that's not fancy. That's real. Okay. So it's like when you're going to make solos, you don't want to be um, like, you don't want to be going like, uh. you know, the band's going boom. over this but 
That's what that's what our vibe is. That's what it is. You don't need to go crazy on the shit. You just need to vibe out. And and you can hear him. That's that's all it is. Um, but yeah. Uh Silver Sky SE, get it, man. They're great guitars. They're fantastic. Uh honestly, I, I have a recommend my biggest recommendation for anyone, uh whatever because there's you guys just had two people ask me about guitars. The only guitar that you should ever buy is the guitar that will make you practice the guitar the most. Okay? That's it. Like if you look at that guitar over there, my yellow one, the Les Paul, when I got that guitar, I really, really, really wanted that guitar because that's the guitar that like, I was like, this is my dream guitar. I'm going to play the shit out of guitar. And when I got it, I played the shit out of it. Um, then I have like my Stratocaster over there. I got that guitar. I played the shit out of it. Um, but then I stopped playing this one. I actually never play that Les Paul, like ever. Uh, great guitar, but I never play it. So it's like, get the guitar that you like. Don't listen to Google. Don't listen to all the fucking review warriors and all this stuff being like, this is the best wood and this gets like, unless you're into that shit, don't do it. Like if you're not someone who likes that stuff, don't, don't use that as the, your metric on things. And seriously, I give you permission that if it looks shiny and cool, I don't care if it's a Hello Kitty guitar. If you think it's cool, get the guitar because there's people who play Hello Kitty guitars that shit all over like people who have a Silver Sky. So just saying, that's my two cents. You do not need a fancy guitar, but if a fancy guitar is what you want, get the fancy guitar. Get the guitar that you like, and that's the one. Like, I'm, I'm telling you right now, you do not need to listen to, like, this is the best tone. Because honest to God, 90% of people who play guitar, none of that shit matters anyway because they suck. Like, I'm not going to lie. If I had to use what is the best wood and all that stuff, you hear everyone say, oh, man, this is like the great tone. It's like, bro, you just don't know how to play guitar. Like, what's the point? It's like, it's like giving someone a Ferrari and they've never driven a car before. They don't know what the fuck to do with it. <laughs> it's just going to crash. <laughs> like, and that's what happens. A lot of these people buy these expensive guitars or they get like someone told them that this was the right guitar, guitar, guitar to get. Like, and then they don't, and then they don't love it. Like, the thing that makes you want to play a guitar is one, you either love music and or two, you just love the instrument that you got. You're like, I just love this guitar. This is such a cool guitar. I just really like playing it. Don't underestimate that feeling. That's, that's worth more than everything. Then just sort of fuck them. Yeah. Like, seriously, if you don't like strats, don't get a strat, man. 100%, I'm telling you right now. Do you know why I got a strat? Because I played that Les Paul, I got into John Mayer, and then all I was into was blue stuff. And every time I would be in recording sessions and people would be like, hey, why does your Les Paul sound like a strap? And I'm like, I don't know. Because <laughs> all I was trying to do was play that kind of music. And all I had was a Les Paul. So I was trying to make my Les Paul sound like a strap. And so that's why I just bought a strap. I was like, oh, well, maybe I need to go buy a strap then. <laughs> so... So like that that's that's my two cents when it comes to guitars. So hopefully that helps you. Oh that's going has a bit of dirt on it. Oh. Oh, that was the wrong one. <laughs> Fucking Simon's here like, bro, we need to get to the John Mayer solo. Luan just keeps stopping every like two seconds. <laughs> Rip it in, bro.
And, and like, again, for anyone who's getting into guitar stuff, um, you would like Google, what is the guitar licks to learn? Guitar technique practice. Do you know what guitar technique practice is? Fucking this. Like, this is what you need to do for guitar technique. Because we were just having, this is what we were just talking about on your post, Simon, when you, when you, uh, you were talking in your video. And I was like, look, for technique practice, this is what you do. This is exactly it. You're going to get the song and like say you're like, oh, I want to work on, like you're going to just try and replicate the song or replicate his tone or replicate his playing. That's, that's the best bending practice you're ever going to get in your life, man, is try to copy David Ryan Harrison in that moment. Or it's like whatever artist you're trying to like emulate, you just copy the, their approach. And that's how you're going to get really, really good really, really fast. But a lot of people will be like, oh, I'm going to do all this guitar exercise practice and do all these things and do all this blah, blah, blah. And like, man, it holds them back so much because they're just wasting so much time doing exercises and not playing music. So this is a cool thing to know as well. He sounds fucking great and he's making heaps of mistakes right there, which is good. So like when you're hearing him play, he's really clued in on the, on the song. Like he is so in on the vibe and there might be little mistakes in his technique, but who gives a shit? It sounds fucking awesome. So don't be afraid to let the musicality take over and slip a couple of notes. Uh, that sounded sick, but you can hear it there. Little slips, but but he just comes back. Like that bend there, I don't do enough of. I need to get better to that. It's like a quarter turn bend. It's like a BB King thing. Now this is the money. You like if you guys are wondering how do you get good at doing solos like that? You learn how to sing like this. There is there is a, a huge correlation. It's not a it's not it's not a fucking rocket science to to draw the the parallel between the best guitarists in the world. Because I was thinking about this the other day. Actually, I was I was because someone asked about Rick Beato and they were asking like, oh, what do you think of Rick Beato? And I was like, I mean, I like him. Um, he just shits on songwriters. And I was like, why this, there's an obsession with guitar players and trying to be like, you know, there's this, this, this guitarist, like I think it's Matteo uh, Asato or something like that. Really, really great guitarist, insane. But all these guitarists want to be like these fast guitarists and they want to like shred and like fill out and know all these scales and all this stuff. And it's like, but the guitarists that like connect with people the most are people like this. Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jimi Hendrix, B.B. King, John Mayer, Eric Clapton, you know? And when you sit and think about it, they are so clued in to the vocals. And who was the other one I listened to today? And I was like, man, so I need to sit down and really like learn their stuff. Queen, Brian May, you know? 
I was listening to, uh, I was like filling up my, my uh, filling up my car at the gas station, and then they had a uh, thing called a, and I was like, dude, this is hit the solo that he was doing over it was like so good, and it like sat so well with uh, Freddie Mercury's like. Um, vocal that you're like this guy has it dialed in and so that's the kind of thing when you when you really want to get into playing this stuff if you can't sing whatever you're trying to emulate on the guitar then it's probably pretty garbage and like you can use that as like a really 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 good you know barometer for what's good and what's bad if you can learn to sing what you're playing you're going to get so much better. I mean, George Benson, another one. Like, you can hear him literally scat his solos. And people are like, is he, is he singing his solo or is he playing what he's singing? Like, you don't know. I think it's both. I think he's just so locked in. And that is the true test of musicianship. If you can get there, that's the dream. Like, playing mad licks and knowing all the scales is, is fine uh, if that's what you're into. But if you're trying to connect with people and make them feel something insane... I, at a like more broad scale, this is what these people are doing. It's so good. He's just sitting there in that bed of Oh, did you hear that keys player just then? <laughs> that was hot. All right, cool. I think we got a lot out of this part here. Let's skip to the next part. So John Mayer jumps in. Did you guys see that? Did you guys just see him swap his head? You play drums, crazy little thing called love in school, dressed like queen. Fuck yeah, AJ, that is so cool. Did you guys just see that little swap though? Did you see that cheeky thing? Let's go back five seconds. Look at, look at how he jumps in on these, on these notes. Watch his right hand, it's fucking clean as shit. Like, and just how his, Volume control, everything is so good. Did you see that scrape? He like, he scrapes up on his finger. And this is the thing, Simon, what I was trying to say. You need to know how to use a pick because you don't want to be the person who can't do it both. You don't want to miss out on like everything and feeling everything. That's sexy. I didn't even know he did that.
Cassie. Is it Casey or Cassie? What's up? I think I've, there's a lot of stuff in here that I'm already taking. Oh, that's cool. So that's just like sitting here on the pentatonic. That's tricky, man. Like you could just like sit here and just like rip on the stuff. All right, I think that's enough of me like taking in. But that is sick. Okay. Now, always the most important thing. Always the most important thing. Anytime you learn this kind of shit, you need to jump in. And it's like, all right, we're gonna take what we learned and we're gonna apply it immediately. You don't want to forget the shit. I was going good and then I lost it.
sing as well? Yes, I do.
All right, that was a vibe. See? So how many of those licks did you guys hear from what we listened to that were like, all right, let's steal that shit? Take as many of the influences as you can, and then you apply it to your music immediately. Now, I don't know how many of those things are going to happen in like my actual shows, but if one of them hooks in, like I might take one lick from that and that applies to like all my shows and that might crush. And so it's like, I feel like I got better, you know, and that's, that's cool. So that's pretty much what you want to think about when you're learning and you're improvising. Hopefully that gives you a framework of like, how I went in, I took what David Ryan Haas was doing, I took what John Mayer was doing, and then I applied it to myself and then started to work on my own voice. Because like learning a, a scale or like learning a lick note for note is only going to get you so far. And it's going to get you really good at playing the lick or playing, you know, the scale or whatever. But if you don't know how to be musical about it, you don't know how to think the way that they're thinking. And I'm not saying that I can think that the way they think, but it's going to take me time and it's going to take everyone else time. Like we don't want to learn how to copy what they do. We want to learn how to think the way they, they do. Because if you're trying to copy them, you've lost the game because you're now playing in a game that they're not even playing in. They're not playing that game. They're not being like, oh, here's like how many licks can I fit in here? They're just like, no, this is the music. This is the vibe of the music. This is what I can do. And so that is the game. Now, if you can't play that game, I don't know what you're doing. And like, if your trick is, if the, if the dream is to connect with lots of people, that's the game. You want to play their game and then learn how to make it work for you rather than be like, hey, I'm going to do the thing that everyone else that's failing does. Play Thunderstruck. <laughs>